friends welcome to this fourth lecture in our neurology series uh, now uh, we'll be going to the basics of nerve conduction studies and electromyography so just take an arbitrary example that probably we are dealing with say ulnar nerve let me take an example of ulnar nerve wherein you have a motor component this is the motor component of ulnar nerve and this is a sensory component the motor component goes from anterior horn cell right to the muscles right muscles could be your first dorsal interosseous it could be your abductor digiti minimi and sensations to your skin okay so now how do you do nerve conduction studies and how do we interpret so the basic principle is that we stimulate both motor and sensory nerves so we are seeing both motor and sensory aspects so what do we do we stimulate motor nerve at various place say at the wrist below the elbow above the elbow even at plexus we can uh, stimulate how do we stimulate we stimulate by giving electrical current to the muscle and what is the type of stimulation it is supra maximal supra maximal stimulation by supra maximal i mean 100% of the nerve fibers are stimulated so the current it flows down through your neuromuscular junction the acetylcholine is released the nicotinic receptors are involved and there is a contraction of muscle so you have a recording electrode over your muscle and what does it record it records a action potential what type of action potential this is known as compound muscle action potential c map so you stimulate at above elbow you get a good c map you stimulate below elbow will exactly similar c map of the same amplitude you stimulate above wrist again you have a good c map what is a good c map how do we come to this conclusion that this is good we test normal volunteers without any disease for these c maps so for age and sex we have a normal distribution of c map right so we know how high this c map is for ulnar nerve okay so this is known as compound mus muscle action potential so now when we say compound mus muscle action potential this we are talking of motor nerve so what it is telling you it is telling you that the health of nerve is good it tells you the health of neuromuscular junction is good it is indirectly telling you the muscle is also good problem anywhere from anterior horn cell downwards 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 to your muscle problem anywhere will give rise to some problem in your c maps so a robust good c map is giving you a hell lot of information that your nerve is good your neuromuscular junction is good your muscle is also good right similarly for sensory nerves when you stimulate you stimulate at one place maybe and you record at the skin bit challenging because sensory nerves are small nerves so it's bit challenging so you record snap sensory neuronal action potential which is a analog of c map so snap is a analog for c map right so now we see the pathology say for example i have a problem at wrist i lose my 50% of the neurons i lose my 50% of the neurons at wrist now i stimulate say above elbow so if we have 50% of the neurons which are less what will happen you have a decreased amplitude by 50% simply so the c map decreases by 50% right suppose you have a problem in your plexus you lose 50% here 
and then you stimulate above elbow so common convention is to think like that you will have a robust semen no you won't you have already in degeneration so you your 50 percent nerves degenerate right to your neuromuscular junction so again your c map if you stimulate at above elbow will be 50 percent smaller in amplitude so whether you lose your neurons distally or you lose your neurons proximally when you have a neurogenic problem the c map decreases by 50 percent as in proportion with the amount of nerve fibers or the neuronal involvement right similarly if you have a 50 percent dropout in your sensory nerve your snap decreases by 50 percent so amplitude of c map and amplitude of snap gives you the amount of uh, neurons which are degenerated so it's a neurogenic issue the second thing which we measure is conduction velocity cv conduction velocity we measure conduction velocity by taking a tape we measure the distance from the affected muscle to your stimulating uh, area and we divide it by the time taken by the electrical current which goes so normally in upper limbs the conduction velocity is 50 meters per second and it is double in our lower limbs conduction depends upon myelin okay conduction depends upon myelin so suppose you lose 50 percent of myelin at rest you lose 50 percent of myelin at rest say for example you have a carpal tunnel syndrome so you lose 50 percent of your myelin at rest you stimulate at above elbow so your c map will be decreased but it will also be delayed the time taken will be longer so the speed of conduction would be say 30 meters per second or 20 meters per second okay so whenever you have 50 percent or more or you have any sort of demyelination the problem is predominantly not with your nerve fibers so you have a reasonable c map but the time taken by the current from this point of stimulation to the to your affected muscle is longer so the speed decreases the third point which we measure is conduction blocks or what you call as distal latency what is distal latency it is the time taken by the electrical current from the most distal point of stimulation to the muscle okay so whenever you have focal conduction block anywhere you have time which, which will be more so this is known as distal latency just imagine now you have problem above elbow you lose myelin above elbow there is no valerian degeneration in demyelination so if you stimulate below elbow the time taken will be normal so it is at the problematic point where whole of the problem stays there is no valerian degeneration right so your c map would be robust the time taken would be absolutely normal you have conduction velocities in sensory nerves also but we don't measure distal latencies in your sensory nerves fine so this is just very basic of your nerve conduction study in motor nerves we measure c map we measure conduction velocity and we measure distal latency right conduction velocity is decreased in demyelinating lesions whereas amplitude of c map decreases in your neurogenic conditions right the same applies for your sensory nerves also now we come to the needle part of the examination emg 
suppose this is a cross section of a muscle then you have anterior horn cells root nerve neuromuscular junction anterior horn cell root nerve neuromuscular junction so we take an arbitrary example that we have three nerve roots so we draw motor units so one nerve root supply multiple muscle fiber this constitutes a motor unit this constitutes a motor unit similarly this red one it supplies its own muscle fibers this is one motor unit the blue one also supplies its own muscle fibers so it has its own motor unit so what do you do now suppose again uh, i insert needle in my interosseous first dorsal interosseous it's uh, ulnar nerve right so we insert the needle we insert the needle as we insert the needle we should we hear something earlier we used to hear it in oscilloscope now we hear it in, in our laptops so what do we hear we hear fasciculations and fibrillations we hear for fibrillation otherwise if the muscle is normal if the nerve is normal don't hear anything if the hand is relaxed the muscle is not active there is complete silence but if there is some pathology going on in the muscle or in the nerve you have some fibrillation or fasciculations which can be heard like pop 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 popcorn like sound okay suppose this one single muscle fiber is decaying it's getting destroyed by any problem see for example so when a needle is there without any muscle activation you will hear a loud popping noise which will be regular it's a distress signal which this muscle fiber is sending to you this distress signal is known as fibrillation so fibrillation means you have active decay active decay of a single muscle fiber so this is an active disease something active is going on okay so if there is something active which is going on which is demonstrated by a popcorn like sound and it is known as fibrillation suppose i destroy this anterior horn cell i destroy this green one anterior horn cell what will happen all the green one will be destroyed when all are involved what you hear is fasciculation so fibrillation is when single muscle fiber is involved fasciculation is when the whole motor unit is involved right now what will happen is these blue and red will give sprouts so as to supply these decayed fibers so these two will try to compensate for the loss of the third anterior horn cell so they will compensate so what does it mean compensation will take time so that means fasciculation is occurring in a disease which is chronic it's not an acute problem so if you hear fasciculation on the emg it means there is a long standing disease whereas if you have fibrillation it means something active is going on there is something not chronic okay so when it will give sprouts what will happen is suppose 
everything was normal and i try to you know make my thumb like this so i am activating my first dorsal interosseous so with 30% of the power probably i will just have motor unit potential like this this is mup motor unit potentials if i am applying only one third of the power suppose i apply two third of the power so this blue one also gets activated so i have like something like this suppose i stimulate my first dorsal interosseous to the full power so i have something like this so whole of the screen goes up with good motor unit potentials okay now you see that this green one is gone so i won't have this green one but blue and red they are more in numbers so the total amplitude decreases but the number increases you getting the point so you have sorry uh, what will happen is you will have fewer you have only two colors left so blue one and red one which is left but they they are supplying more fibers the well, fiber number of fibers are same but they both are supplying more fibers so, so you will have large amplitude because of number of fibers which are more but you will have fewer in numbers you getting the point why large in amplitude because the two anterior horn cell are now supplying all the fibers so the amplitude goes up but why the frequency goes down because the number of anterior horn cells are less now if there would have been three the number would have increased there are only two so the number has decreased but the amplitude increases okay suppose we are dealing with a condition which is predominantly muscle based problem say for example you have a patients of duchenne's muscular dystrophy where there is a random drop out means one red one goes away one green one goes away one blue one goes away your anterior horn cells are intact if your anterior horn cells are intact you have random drop out of individual muscle fibers what will happen to this the amplitude will decrease because the absolute number has gone down but the frequency will remain same so you will have three colors or the number will remain same because of this but the amplitude goes down so when you have a myogenic problem so if you have a myogenic problem you have low amplitudes motor unit potentials if you have a neurogenic if you have a neurogenic problem you have a increased amplitude but decreased frequency i hope you got it so this is in brief about ncv and emg right so in emg we need to understand about fibrillation and fasciculation fibrillation means single motor fiber is involved it denotes very active disease very active degeneration fasciculation means multiple small fiber multiple motor fibers are involved and it denotes some chronicity because nerve will take time to grow sprouts to other right and you can have two patterns of motor unit potential one is known as myogenic pattern and neurogenic pattern this completes your emg and ncv